on the CW Picks 11. There is so much that the candidates are not saying, or to put it another way, what they are saying with their body language could be just as revealing what's coming out of their mouths. Joining us now is Tanya Ryman. She is a body language expert, and her book, The Power of Body Language, take my word for it, it is a fascinating read. Uh, Tanya, let's get, let's get your take on the, uh, on the candidates. First of all, probably the most animated of all the candidates has been Donald Trump. He's caustic, politically incorrect. What does his body language tell you? Well, typically, he is all over the place. So when you see somebody like Donald Trump, if you notice the evolution from the first debate to the seventh or to the sixth since he didn't participate, he's gone from very big gestures to kind of staying smaller and more controlled as he's gone along. And that's because he's learned that after a while, you need to come across as more controlled or else people aren't going to see you as presidential. So we've seen that evolution where he went from being very big to kind of toning it down. The interesting thing is, though, after like the first hour of the debate, what happens is he kind of goes back to autopilot, that automatic feeling, and you start to see these big gestures coming at back again. So he's controlling it, but it's still big, exaggerated, and over the top. A big act? Yeah. He's a drama man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows how to play to the camera. He definitely Certainly does. does. I agree. Okay, let's talk about Jeb Bush. He's, he's kind of been lackluster. He's failed to electrify in the campaign. Uh, he, he, but he touched the uh, heart string the other day uh, when he talked about his family. You know what? That, to me, is scary because what we noticed in this latest debate is that suddenly he's like more magnificent, right? He's louder. He's more robust. Let's, let's listen to a, okay. a sound bite from him. Look, I'm an establishment because my dad, the greatest man alive, was president of the United States, and my brother, who I adore as well as a fantastic brother, was president. Fine, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, note the head negation as he's saying how wonderful his family is. That's a slight thing that I would pick up as a red flag to say he's telling us that his family is wonderful, he's really proud of his brother, his father, but he's slightly shaking his head no, which tells us there's a question there. So it tells me the family dynamic might not be as perfect as he wants us to believe. However, that is part of his baseline, so you take that into consideration. But the scarier part for me with him was that when Trump is there, He's smiling, this nervous gesture, this nervous grin. It's a mask, you know it's make-believe. Trump is taken out of the picture and suddenly he's more powerful, he's more dominant, right? So my feeling is, does that mean if you become the president that anybody else who's powerful in the room now, you feel inferior? So it was great to see him move up in that superiority level, but scary to see that he feels inferior to Trump. What will he feel when we get around other world leaders? Very interesting. Let, let's turn quickly to uh, Chris Christie. Oh, Chris Christie. I think we have a sound bite yes. of him. Let, let's hear this first and then hear your another. I know the folks out there tonight are incredibly frustrated because what they see is a government that doesn't work for them. You know, for the 45-year-old construction worker out there who's having a hard time making ends meet, who's lost $4,000 in the last seven years in his income because of this administration. He is so great at working the crowd when there is no crowd. So what does he do, right? He looks directly at that red dot and he makes a connection with his audience. And he does so because eye contact is so powerful that even through a camera, we feel it, right? So when he goes that 45-year-old truck driver, everybody at home who is a 45-year-old truck driver goes, Chris Christie is talking directly to me and they feel it. So we know from eye contact, studies show that you can really form powerful bonds. So just by simply relating to that camera, the audience, the TV world really feels the connection with him. And he's good at that and that makes people at home think he's the guy for me. Well, how do you feel? Do you agree? You know, I, I do. You know, Chris Christie throughout all the debates I think has been impressive. I, you know, in terms of content this last time, I thought he just kept coming back to Hillary Clinton too much. I agree. But in terms of body language, yeah. you're absolutely right. He has done this dramatic thing where he's able to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you know, to his credit. But let's turn on to the Rand Paul. Now, his facial expressions, that alone, <laughs> yeah. take a look, <laughs> okay. that, that delivers a message. Cruz is the intellectual and political heir to your father's 2012 campaign and the liberty movement. And your father now says that it's realistic that Donald Trump will be your party's nominee. So did you make a mistake? 
you know, <laughs> seeing the two of them side by side, I don't know who to break down first. But okay, yes, yeah. talking about Rand Paul, he was really bad the first couple of debates. Every single gesture was, every single facial emotion was smirk, a sneer, nastiness, sarcasm. Like you can actually hear him snicker. And then again, <laughs> as they kind of learn, you know, they go back and the people go, you can't do that. You know, you have to monitor, you have to be aware. They tone it down. But again, after a while, that hour and a half mark is usually where we see autopilot takes over again and we become ourselves. So here you notice he starts to do that one-sided smirk. It's like you lift your lip up a little bit yeah, and yeah. just that little <laughs> sneer tells you that you don't respect that person. You have no admiration. Worse yet, you probably think that they're an idiot. <laughs> Let's take a quick look. Yeah. John Kasich of Ohio. Oh, he was good though. Let's take a look. It isn't because I'm all that great. It's because I've been assembling a team of people who want to be involved in something that's a little bigger than themselves. Okay, just quickly on him. Kasich is one of the most authentic people I've seen during this debate. He's really good when it comes to authenticity coming across as genuine. Here, the thing was, he's like, I really don't think I'm that great. I really, you know, I might not be that great. And with this double shoulder shrug here, this is a sign of insincerity. And what it says is, I don't even believe my own statement. So the reason we do this is we tuck our neck down to become smaller because when we're feeling insecure, sit up, guys. that's right. Now everybody, sit up. Don't sit up. Making me self-conscious, yeah. Marvin. When we when we when we feel insecure, we want to become smaller so people don't see us. Okay. So what he does is say, Oh well, I'm not that great. And then he shrinks down. So you start to think to yourself, My goodness, he doesn't even feel secure that he's a strong enough candidate so when you see somebody do that double shoulder shrug you just realize there might be a notch of insincerity now I want to move on sure. eyes can be very telling and here's yes. a case in point ah. I intend to do the exact same thing to defeat uh, radical uh, Islamic uh, terrorism uh, and to uh, devote uh, the resources <laughs> from the booming economy to rebuilding our Navy, rebuilding our, our, our Air Force, rebuilding our Army, and ensuring we have the capacity Sir, to keep this country top. safe. If, if you guys say, ask one more mean question, I may have to leave the stage. <laughs> The okay. eyes have it. Okay, yeah, but first of all, I have to just say, what a big baby. I'm going to have to leave the stage. Okay, all right, aside from that, yes, blink rate. So what we saw here with Cruz was a really big increase in, in blink rate. So blink rate tells us what he's feeling emotionally. So there's that emotional arousal. So the more you blink, the more you're feeling anxiety. So with him here, we noticed that he was blinking more than probably I once a second. I don't want to leave the Democrats out of it. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. A quick clip of Hillary Clinton here. Oh, yes. A Republican candidate for president, literally standing in the courthouse door in Kentucky, calling for people to join him in resisting a Supreme Court ruling. So okay, Hillary, just quickly, she is very good when it comes to nonverbal communication. Here, what I notice though, she has these high brows, and when you have these high brows, it's like you're trying to be surprising. Let's take a look quick at Bernie Sanders. All okay, right. well, we can All talk right. about him anyway. All right, talk about him anyway. We don't <laughs> Bernie have. Sanders, you know what? His posture has gotten worse over the years, so he kind of looks like he's intimidated. He's not. He's very strong. He's authentic. If you don't agree with his message, you don't like him, but if you do, you love him. He's either liked yeah. or there hated. He is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he's got big gestures as well. So, but it's true with him, you either, it's like Trump, you either like them or you hate them. Okay, somebody should read your li body language. You're quite oh, animated. Trust me. It's been <laughs> read. It's been read. Right. That's it. That's our show. We've got us read your book and I thank Jeannie Zeno and Morgan Peckma thank you for joining us very interesting discussion indeed and of course tomorrow